Now I'm down in the workshop and I'm going to show you how to cut up frame on a miter saw such as this one. If you don't have a power miter saw like this one, you can use a hand miter saw. It's the same thing, but I like the power miter saws better. I think they're a little bit easier to use. So there's a couple of things you need to do to set up your saw. And one is to make sure that the saw is perfectly 90 degrees up and down. And to do that, I'm just going to use a square. Now if you have one of the super accurate squares, fantastic. If not, anything that's 90 degrees will work. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lift my guard up, bring the blade down, and make sure that my blade is perfectly 90 degrees to the table. And this one is. If it wasn't, I would want to make sure that it's absolutely perfect up and down and there's no tilt to the blade. Even a degree or two will matter when you're making frames. And you also want to make sure that your table or your um, chop saw is 45 degree angles are accurate as well. And this one I already know is very accurate. It has perfect 45 degree angles. So the first thing I'm going to do is measure my first length. And to do that, I'm going to use a yardstick. When measuring, again, I want to make sure I measure from the inside edge of the frame, not the outside edge, not where the top of the lip is, but the inside edge of the frame. I'm going to measure 14 inches. So I'm going to go down to 14 and 1 16th of an inch and make a little tiny mark. Now, I'm actually measuring from the 1 inch mark on this ruler because the end of the ruler tends not to be very accurate. So I measure from 1 inch down to actually 15 and 1 16th, put a mark and I'm ready to go. So I'm going to take my framing stock, put it against the back fence of my chop saw, move my saw to 45 degrees, and actually fortunately for me, this miter saw has a laser on it. So I'm going to line up the laser with my mark, making sure that my 45 degree angles angle inwards the way they're supposed to, and I'm going to make my cut. That looks pretty good. I'm going to cut this in the opposite direction now. And I'm going to measure out 14 and 1 16th inches again and cut my second piece. Now that I'm done cutting my two 14 inch lengths, I'm going to line them up edge to edge make sure that they're absolutely perfectly the same length. And fortunately for me, this time they are perfect. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut the 11 inch sides. When I measure my 11 inch sides, I'm going to do the same thing I did before. Line up my end with the 1 inch mark, go down to 12 and 1 16th, make a tip mark and cut my piece. Now that I've cut my 11 inch sides, I'm going to line them up edge to edge and they don't quite line up perfectly. There's about a 16th of an inch left on the edge of this frame that I want to just nibble off on the, the chop saw. I'm going to show you a great way just to take off a fraction of an inch on the uh, miter saw without taking too much off. So I'm going to grab my piece, head back over to the chop saw. Now one of the greatest things about an electric chop saw or miter saw is that you can take off just a fraction of an inch. To do that all I want to do is take my piece of framing stock, push it firmly against the blade when the blade is down, and lift it back up. Turn it on, and 
I just chopped off just the smallest amount of my framing stock and I'm going to line it up, measure it up and see if it's the exact length as the other one. Still a little bit too big. I'm just going to take off another little tiny piece until they're exactly the same length. And there we go. We're just pushing the um, stock against the blade. The tooth actually has some thickness and will take off about 30 second, 30 second of an inch each time. And now my two pieces line up perfectly. Now that I have my four pieces cut on my chop saw, I'm going to show you three different ways on how to nail them together. And the first is a frame pinner. Now that we've cut our pieces, we're going to staple them together on a frame stapler. Um, the frame stapler is a fantastic thing to have, just like the frame color, cutter, but it's not necessary. Um, it's great for smaller pieces, such as these. They'll hold it together quite nicely. But larger pieces, such as this, the frame stapler is not very good for because the um, surface or the front of the frame tends to break away, even on smaller frames. such as this one, the front of the frame tends to pull apart just a little bit right here. So frames like this will need a nail or two just to hold the frame tight. And it's only a small gap, but that small gap matters when you're making frames. So To staple a frame together with this thing, first thing you want to do is make sure you're attaching one long side to one short side. You don't want to attach one long side to one long side. Uh, your frame won't come out very well. So what I'm going to do is place my pieces flat on the cutting surface and I'm going to raise my little rubber guard so that's in the right position. And this thing has a little tiny stop. I could set my piece in place, put the stop in place so that the guard doesn't move anywhere and I can staple it, but I find that it's just a pain in the butt and it's easier just to freehand it. So what I'm going to do is line up my two pieces, place them under the stapler, and push down and put two or three staples in my frame. And it's that simple. That's one piece of the frame. I'm going to put the other three pieces together now. Now this frame stapled together on the frame stapler. You can see that there's staples in each corner. I put three in each corner. And the front of my frame matches up perfectly. And I'm going to show you how to um, assemble a frame two different ways besides the frame stapler. I'm going to show you how to um, use a nail gun as well as just a hammer and drill.